room. Today I'll be showing you how to make a procedural sci-fi plasma jet, something you may see on a spaceship or engine. Anyways, let's get into the nodes. First thing we'll do is delete everything, then add a cube. It's a crime to let the default cube live. Next, tab into edit mode and move the cube until the back face is on the origin of the object. Then tab back out of edit mode and scale it along the y-axis until it looks long enough. You can do more or less, but make sure not to apply the object scale. Let's set up some render settings before we start the shading. This effect works best in Cycles Render, so let's switch our engine to Cycles. Switch to GPU Render if you have one because it's usually faster. Make the world color completely black. Time to start making the material. Open up a new window and go to the Shader Editor or go to the dedicated Shader Editor workspace. First, add a principal volume node. This will be the base shader that will drive the material. Next thing we want to do is make it look like a flame, because like, it's a flame. Add a gradient texture and then set the setting from linear to spherical. If you have the node wrangler add on enable, hit Ctrl T to have texture coordinates automatically created. If not, you can do the slow, stupid, boring way. After this, use the mapping node to align the gradient texture to the cube. You may have to scale it down if it's clipping outside the cube. Next, plug it into the emission strength socket. Also, turn the density value to zero. The effect won't have any fancy patterns in it though, so add a color ramp and mess with the sliders and add new ones to get some cool rings. Another tip is you can push the white values past 1, so if you type in 4 you can get this cool effect. For extra control, you can also add a multiply node. Next thing you want to do is add some noise detail to your flame. Add a noise texture and hit Control t or add it the boring way again. Change the dimension to 40 since we can use this to animate later. Change the texture coordinates from generated to object. Change the scale and detail until it looks right. To combine it with the gradient texture, add a color uh, mix node and change the mix type to overlay. Plug the noise texture into the bottom socket and change the factor until it looks good. You can do this again for a smaller or larger layer of detail. At this point, you'll be able to change the flame color. Change the emission color to blue or pink or yellow or orange or green or whatever color you want. You can also use a color ramp factor for more control. Or make it a rainbow! Now you can change the scale and detail of the noise to get different effects. If you want to animate it, go to frame 1 and find your noise texture, hover over the W value, and hit I to create a keyframe. If you don't have this value, go slap yourself because earlier I told you to change the texture to 4D. Go to your end frame, offset the W, then hit I again. Now select your object and go to your timeline. Select the keyframes and hit V and select a vector. This makes the animation play at a constant speed. Play your animation to test it out. There it goes. There you have it, a procedural flame and blender. I love this setup because it renders so fast and it's pretty noiseless. Don't forget to pick up a free copy of the shader off my gum road as it's a group with these sliders and settings. It's free, but if you're feeling generous, you can leave a tip. I didn't have any ideas for it in the screen, so this is my toad. <laughs> He's a good toad.